Pulling the plug on electric cars. $4 a gallon gas may have you wondering what happened to them. CNN Miles O'Brien went looking for some answers. Listen to that sound. Can you hear it? You can't, right? It's an electric vehicle. This is a 20-year-old Duran. It's a prototype. Now, if you're interested in beating the pump and beating those $4 a gallon gas prices, it's hard to beat an electric car. The problem with electric cars is there isn't a single practical, reasonably priced new electric vehicle on the U.S. market right now. Oh, I did start it. I forget sometimes. <laughs> started or not started. <laughs> Once you get Mark Geller started on the subject of electric cars, there's no stopping him. So it really doesn't inconvenience you. There's definitely no inconvenience, and there's a tremendous amount of uh, pleasure in passing gas stations and watching the price rise. Mark's been breezing by gas pumps in San Francisco for seven years. This is his second all-electric car, a used plug-in Toyota RAV4. Used because right now there isn't a new practical electric car on the U.S. market. Is it frustrating? It's incredibly frustrating. It's frustrating because every day I meet people who would like to be driving this car. Ten years ago, Detroit seemed positively plugged in. The electric car is here. General Motors built and leased about a thousand of the fabled EV1s after a California law mandated sales of zero emission vehicles. I think it's the future. I'm, I'm happy. But by 2003, California backed down. GM repoed the EV1s and destroyed them amid protests. Mark was among the protesters. So why does he think Detroit pulled the plug? I would say because they are fearful of how disruptive plug-in cars will be and how unattractive their old product line will appear. Mark says a fully charged battery takes him 120 miles. Normally, a charge overnight at home is more than enough to get him through the day. And here's the kicker. Mark works for a solar power company. His own roof is covered with solar cells. As soon as I got the car, I realized now I understand why this makes sense. I can create my own electricity. Would you call yourself an electric car zealot? A so zealot go... might be a little strong, <laughs> but I, I truly believe that this is a, 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 an option consumers ought to be able to, to purchase. Back now with another one of those Toyota RAV4 electric vehicles. Take a look under the hood just for a moment. I always like to see what this looks like. Real simple. That's all for, like, air conditioning and stuff. This is just the control unit. There's big batteries that go back through the drivetrain. If you wanted to get one of these, you'd have to go onto eBay. And these days, you'd probably have to spend 60000 bucks for one. Steve Taylor is the owner of all these cars here. He bought this for about 40000 a few years ago on eBay. I guess that settles the demand question for electric cars. People want these cars, right? Yes, they certainly do. I've had lots of people come to me and want to even buy one of my cars that I own here. Detroit blinked 10 years ago and, and pulled the plug, literally, on electric cars. Actually, not quite 10 years ago, but 10 years ago, they're way ahead. <laughs> and they crushed everything. They, they got rid of all the advances they made. Um, you have to wonder if they'd kept going with the electric cars where we'd be now. Have you thought about it that much? Yeah, I would think that we'd have an electric car that would go 300 miles, be comfortable, have all the amenities that we're used to, lightweight, uh, fast. That uh, would be great. Uh, in other words, all the versatility of internal combustion. Let's yes. go down and look. This is the only one in his collection here. You can't get these anymore. These are retrofit metros. This is the only vehicle here you can buy new now. And it's really not. I mean, it's obviously a single-person commuter car. It's expensive, $35,000. Yes. It's, it's called the Sparrow or the NMG for no more gas. No more gas. Um, who's this for, and does it, does it really answer a need? Well, it's a single-person commuter car. Uh, they'll go about 60 miles now with the lithium batteries. Uh, uh, most of the people in America drive by themselves to work, and that's what it was designed for. And most people drive about 30 miles per day. So when they think about electric cars, they think, oh, that's not enough range, but probably it is, yes, right? Yes, it is, yes. It's not the car you're going to take to see the Grand Canyon from Atlanta, <laughs> no, right? definitely not. But as a second car, a commuter car, this might be an option. Perfect. As for you, what, what do you say to people who say, well, hey, the, the electricity that, that uh, um, is generated to juice this up is comes from coal. It's no cleaner. Well, actually, it is cleaner. Uh, the, the power companies are constantly being uh, made to make the power cleaner and cleaner, and 
and a coal power plant charging an electric car is probably just as clean as a Toyota Prius. So we're ahead of the game on that. All right, well, I'm, I'm going to take it for a quick test drive. This thing will do what now in speed? 70 miles an hour. If you dare. Huh? Have you ever taken it to 70? Yes, I have. <laughs> yeah, it was scary. I bet it was. You wearing your helmet? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm off in the Sparrow, and I don't know if I'm going to take it 70, but